Hi everyone, welcome to UTA Planetarium's another live star stream. My name is Levant Gürdemir, director of UTA Planetarium and UTA astrophysicist, and I'm here today with you again on another exciting subject. And uh, thanks for our audience. Uh, hi Vicky, hi Peterson, uh, and I can see many others. That's great. Uh, I hope it's not your first time to our live streams. As you can see, I'm in a different environment today. I am in a remote location uh, at my home office. And Jim Bader is uh, our program coordinator. He's in the office, he's in the planetarium and uh, managing the stream. And we have great planetarium staff with you. And today we are going to talk about uh, first meteor shower tonight. So there is a uh, one of the spectacular most spectacular p uh, meteor showers of the year. We call it Perseids. Uh, well, uh, we talked about meteor showers before and we have actually an entire video about it. You can always go back to our social media channels and find the old videos. Uh, one of the video is dedicated on meteor showers and meteors, meteor events. So um, this particular one uh, is uh, actually uh, the, the, the Perseids that, that happens every year uh, in the month of August, sometime usually around mid-August. And what happens is uh, there was actually a comet. Um, and the comet, uh, the last time it passed near Earth in 1992, and it is it, it has a very long, uh, a few hundred years uh, long um, uh, the period. Uh, and that comet left behind a lot of dust and small rock particles behind. And that comet is actually still existing and orbiting around the sun. And then uh, the next time it's going to be here um, well after year 2100. So we are not going to see that comet again. Uh, but the, all the, the dust and uh, the debris left behind is still there. And it is crossing with the Earth's orbit. So uh, the Earth in the month of around the month of August goes through that orbit and then it encounters a lot of debris particles. So that debris particles, when they are near Earth, they fall on Earth, uh, but they cannot just go past through the Earth's air very easy. So the Earth's air applies a lot of friction force on them and turns them into a fiery ball in the sky. And that's what we see. And uh, the meteor shower, they are not going to just happening in just one night. Uh, there are actually several nights and sometimes several weeks that happening, but we are expecting to peak to happen in the early morning hours of tomorrow. So the best time to look at for the meteor shower in the sky, first you need to approximately be looking at north and northeast directions. If you have a clear view, uh, you can see uh, usually after midnight uh, it peaks more and uh, you should be able to see about two to three strikes in the sky per minute. So that's a very good rate for meteor shower. Don't expect anything like that raining or fireworks. Uh, a lot of time analogy is given for meteor shower is like fireworks. It is actually not like that. It is pretty much uh, the matter of... Uh, uh, just a two, three meteors per, per, per minute. So that's a good rate. That's a very good rate. So uh, let's talk about for sky watchers. Um, for example, let's say you want to be or you want to start your, um, uh, not career, but maybe as a hobby, you want to become an amateur astronomer or a sky watcher. Uh, which is great. Uh, I would like to introduce some tools to you so you can go ahead and install those tools for uh, yourself and use it. So uh, first time watcher, sky watcher, you would like to take a look in the night sky and you would like to uh, find out what's going on. Uh, there is a, There are a few different software around that you can download and even they are free to use. Uh, you don't have to pay any license fee. One of them I would like to talk about is um, Stellarium. You would remember, so I would like to go ahead and uh, share my screen now. Uh, and also, uh, when I share my screen, I have a picture with you to share. This is showing the, the, the comet's path, path uh, for the, the meteor shower. 
and the earth goes through uh, this uh, uh, dust and debris zone, and that's when we see these this meteor shower. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my browser, uh, and I would like to introduce uh, uh, a, a software which we used a few weeks ago to do some stargazing uh, that works great with the desktop computers and uh, uh, there are as you can see many different versions one for Linux one for uh, Mac OS if you are a Mac fan and Windows and even there is a web version so you don't have to download anything you can just use web but it is really with uh, a stripped down version of the, the software so uh, you can click on one of the links, the appropriate link uh, for your computer and download. Uh, and we are going to post these links, by the way, into the comments chat. So uh, you can go ahead and uh, use the correct links because some of the links may mislead or take you to some uh, different places. Uh, Stellarium is the name of the program and Stellarium.org is its website. So uh, I downloaded to my computer uh, and let me show you how it looks like. I'm not going to go deep into detail. This is not the, the purpose of this video, but at least I am going to show you how it looks. It is very easy to use because it is just giving you a view of uh, a round. So currently it is 1 p.m. Uh, in Arlington, Texas. Uh, so we are going to we are seeing just a blue, nice uh, sky, but let's. Uh, there is a time control over here. I'm going to quickly forward the time, and after sunset, uh, we are going to see the sky. And this is this is after sunset. The stars are coming around. That is so great. So I can just use my mouse and rotate the sky around me. And one of the things, one of the commonly asked questions to me is these two planets in the sky uh, when you uh, right after sunset uh, around the, the the south direction there are two bright uh, light points in the sky very visible very noticeable those are Jupiter and Saturn the brighter one is Jupiter and the, the dimmer one is Saturn uh, so uh, uh, those are the, the questions very easy to spot so what time is the meteor shower uh, is asked. Uh, so there is no actually time. Uh, the peak is going to be in the early morning hours. So any time between midnight and the sunrise is going to be the time, the peak time of the meteor shower. That is not mean that you won't see any meteors uh, in the sky right after sunset. Uh, you can likely spot a few. Uh, and even tomorrow evening and even Friday morning, uh, you may be able to see some meteor showers. So this is not a momentarily event. Meteor showers usually last days and weeks. Uh, and uh, we just estimate the peak and that's going to be to tonight from midnight to tomorrow morning. Uh, good to see you again, Brixton. How are you doing? Oh, I hope everything is great. And you can see these, uh, actually, the, the meteor shower uh, events uh, in the Stellarium too. So um, we uh, did a full stargazing uh, in the past. So you can find that video. The things are still current. But I'm going to exit from Stellarium right now because we have uh, some other things to show. For example, um, uh, one of the, the uh, great things to look at in the night sky are uh, satellites. The, the satellite passes and sometimes some of the satellites appear in very bright form, even flash and disappear. Some of the satellites are just a constant point of lights, uh, just go at the constant speed in the sky. Uh, and ISS, for example, a very bright uh, spacecraft uh, let's say uh, in the, the in the in the orbit around earth uh, and the, the, the pass of the the international space station iss is spectacular uh, to find those i recommend uh, heavensabo.com there's a dash between heavens and abo when you go into the website 
it is showing you a very simple user interface. You set your location here on the right top corner. And uh, then there is a lot of things to choose from. Uh, for example, there is a, a live sky view. Uh, this is a new feature that didn't exist in the past. But uh, when you click on it, it is actually uh, giving you a quick uh, view of uh, constellations, even uh, spotting some of the planets. For ex right now, uh, there is sun in the sky. As you can see, Mercury is very close to it. It is actually in the sky, but we cannot see it because it's daytime. So let's go back. Uh, we can see the quick view of night sky. And uh, for example, there are uh, predictions of uh, ISS. So let's see uh, the predictions of ISS. Uh, for these periods, for August 11 and August 21, uh, there are no visible passes. Let's go to the feature between the August 21 and to August 21st to 31st. Um, there are several passes of ISS from Arlington Sky, and you can see the times and uh, the magnitude. This is important because uh, the magnitude is actually tell you how bright the appearance of the uh, International Space Station going to be. The smaller the number is, the um, brighter the object. So um, so we are looking at the, the smallest number if you want to see it in the, the brightest form, and that's going to be minus 3.8, for example. Minus 3.8 is great, the, the smaller number than minus 3.5. So uh, you can see and find out the best times and nights of uh, International Space uh, Station uh, passes uh, and there are a lot of other uh, links uh, over here. For example, you can, uh, there's like whole astronomy section you can visit. And uh, uh, this uh, is showing the, the current position of ISS, uh, where it is and on the, the flying on which, which continent. And uh, Hubble Space Telescope, uh, daily predictions for brighter satellites. This is a useful link. Uh, when you click on it, you can see uh, a lot of uh, satellites here. Uh, some of them are going to be TV satellites. Some of them are going to be science, scientific satellites, weather satellites, and even uh, you may be able to spot sometimes the military satellites and secret satellites, perhaps. Well, the secret satellites are usually not listed here, uh, but you may be able to spot on your own uh, if you are uh, a careful sky watcher. Anyway, this is a great site to find out, and even there is, uh, never use it, but Android app, it seems like you can uh, download and test. And let's go to our next uh, chapter. So you are, you are going to watch the sky. Uh, one of the important parameters to find out is whether the sky is going to be clear tonight or not. So uh, if you are just going to look at the sky, that is not important because you can just go out and see. But if you are planning to go on, on a remote observing location, you need to pack your telescope, etc. So you actually need kind of like a uh, how clear it's going to be. You, you need a forecast. So this is Astronomer's forecast website. Uh, I use cleardarksky.com. Uh, you can, again, set your location. There are many choose from the list, and I set Arlington uh, for now. And uh, those markers are showing me there's a color indicator. It is showing uh, some information about cloud cover, transparency, uh, seeing, and darkness. Uh, and there's also wind, humidity, and temperature, too. So when you actually hover your mouse on a... Um, uh, uh, color, it tells you what it means. So uh, right now, uh, at the, the midnight, we are looking at the Tuesday midnight hour, so tonight uh, midnight, the forecast is going to be a clear sky. So um, the transparency is going to be above average, which is good because we need a transparent uh, uh, weather or air. Uh, seeing is an important parameter for uh, especially professional observers because um, 
that uh, the seeing depends on a lot of uh, things in the air like pollution and humidity etc so uh, the seeing parameter it seems like it's going to be poor so for professional astronomer it is going to be a poor observation condition tonight even though the sky is, the forecast is clear uh, darkness. It is important if you are going to try uh, seeing very dim objects in the sky. And there is a, a limiting magnitude. It's 6.3, which means the with the unaided eye or naked eye, the dimmest objects we can see is magnitude 6.3. You can look at all the other parameters. And if you would like to see uh, where this information comes from, there is another website that I would like to introduce, and it is uh, Go's Image Viewer. You can, we will post the link. You can also uh, search this Go's Image Viewer keyword on the internet, and you will uh, end up in in the same uh, website. So this is a, a satellite uh, website, and here this area covers Texas. Uh, it's marked as Southern Plains. And when I click on it, it will show me some options. What I would like to see, geocolor, air mass, sandwich, and day cloud face. So you can pick any of them. For example, let's click geocolor. And here it shows cloud coverage. So um, here, the Dallas Fort Worth area is around here. I even you may be looking at the sky, and you are not seeing any cloud, that doesn't mean there are clouds exist because if the clouds are so thin, they are invisible to us. And uh, this satellite image will show you what exactly is going on above the sky from the eye above. So this is very useful if you would like to see and confirm something visually. There is one more software that you can use if you are interested in more detail about the objects in the sky. Uh, that's called WorldWideTelescope.org. And this website is acting like an actual telescope. And you can, a lot of uh, planets to choose from, for example, Jupiter. When I click on Jupiter, uh, it shows me Jupiter and you can actually uh, go uh, and orbit around Jupiter and uh, get a lot a lot of information. So this is also a useful website. All right, if you uh, so far, uh, any questions, please uh, drop your questions on the comments chat and I will uh, try to go ahead and answer as soon as I can. And here's the Jupiter's image. So uh, great so far. And let's look at one more website. So Hubble sites. Hubble Telescope has a public outreach website called hubblesite.org. You can find a lot of video and pictures, uh, news about the Hubble's favorites. Uh, what I like uh, seeing at the Hubble's website is under the announcement section, there is a tonight's sky video for each month. So this month they posted the August video. And when you click on it, it is their videos are usually a few minutes long and talks about the constellations and planets and deep space objects you can see in the night sky. Very useful website. And every uh, amateur and professional astronomers like this website. Uh, this has been around for a long time. It's called Astronomy Picture of the Day. Uh, NASA each day uh, surprises the entire world with a picture, uh, just a random picture of a something space related. And this is called Astronomy Picture of the Day. Uh, many websites uh, use uh, this uh, astronomy picture of the day uh, on their websites. Uh, it's a great thing. You may want to check uh, every, on daily to see uh, that day's picture. And the link is pretty simple, uh, apod.nasa.gov. All right, so, Okay, uh, we got a question from Brixton. Uh, when the planetarium will open? Uh, well, I wish to have an answer for that. 
the planetarium is currently uh, closed uh, to protect public safety and as soon as uh, we hear from uh, a credible uh, uh, credible agency like CDC uh, and the, the, the university administration that it is safe to open it for a public, uh, we will go ahead and open the planetarium and uh, likely there will be some safety measures in place. Uh, we will limit the attendance and, and everything. So um, please Keep an eye on the planetarium's website and social media for the announcement. Uh, and hopefully in September, uh, we will do that. So, okay, uh, great questions. Uh, if you have any more. Uh, the planetarium in Fair Park still open. Uh, no, they are not open. They closed the planetarium for a long time ago because uh, they uh, moved the entire museum to uh, the downtown Dallas area, uh, the, the Perot Museum. Uh, the museum didn't have any planetarium in plan, uh, so the Fair Park Planetarium was closed a long time ago uh, for good. Uh, there are some other planetariums in the area. Uh, of course, UTA Planetarium, we are proud of uh, serving uh, public to, since 2006 uh, when we opened the doors of the planetarium to public and uh, and as the the, the largest uh, planetarium of the metroplex with uh, top modern technology computers and projection system we are proud to serve everybody at UTA planetarium great questions so uh, one, uh, somebody was asking earlier, uh, when, what is going to be the topic uh, for the next week? So we talked about, uh, pretty much, it was like a beginner's guide for Skywaters. Now you have pretty much a, a lot of tools you need to begin your Skywatching. Uh, you don't need any tools to start with. You don't need any uh, expense to start with. You can just go outside and start wondering about the, the constellations and stars and planets. And then you can download uh, the, the free software to find out what it is, uh, the things you see in the night sky. You can find the other uh, information through the websites I introduced. And whenever you are ready to uh, invest in a telescope, uh, one of the commonly uh, asked questions to me is, what telescope uh, one should buy? So, uh, unfortunately, there is no one telescope that fits to everyone. Uh, but, of course, the, the beginners will start with something inexpensive. And uh, next week, uh, we would like to talk about uh, these little bits, uh, introducing the different types of telescopes and see which one is going to fit for you. I have one over here, a very small one. This is a very small uh, four inch telescope, uh, but it works great for many, many purposes, especially for like a, the, the solar system watching. Uh, this kind of telescope just, just works. But if you are interested in uh, astrophotography, if you are going to, if you have a professional camera and you would like to take some pictures of uh, bright planets and uh, maybe deep sky objects, uh, you need something better than this. Uh, so uh, we hope to introduce and uh, prepare some information for you next week so we can talk about um, telescopes. Well, I hope uh, everyone uh, is going to be here with us next week uh, and hope to see you all uh, very soon. Uh, check our social media and like us. Bye-bye.
Thank you.